evening all. Jeff uh, Becky, I'm just <laughs> trying to shoot a quick uh, stack video where it gets ridiculous. Um, mostly vinyl on this one. Um, some revisits and a uh, fair amount of new. Jumping right in. I got, finally found uh, this is bootleg, but um, it's actually a pretty good one. Um, Lover Creation Series. I don't know. I don't know what the story of that is, but yeah, this is a Japanese um, kind of site. Like, they probably were thrown in with Prog, but I don't know if it's very proggy. But uh, this is uh, the band People and Ceremony Buddha Meat Rock. Um, this shows up on the BC fairly often, actually. But uh, yeah, Japanese band. It doesn't mean it get inserts or anything, but um, I think this is like a UK boot. Not sure the life go life goes on records. Um, but unlike the the Phoenix one, this one actually sounds pretty good. Like the a lot of the times that like the Phoenix, they do a lot of the Japanese bootlegs. Um, and Bamboo, I guess, is the other big one. But um, a lot of times, like they come out like kind of flat. Yeah, this one's fairly dynamic and sounds pretty good. So excellent album. Um, yeah, so it's kind of that uh, a later period. It's like I I don't know when this came out exactly, but I'm guessing early 70s ish. Um, but uh, yeah, it definitely does have a little um, not safe for work stuff going on in the second the second side. Um, little uh, sounds of ex ecstasy, I guess you'd say. Um, but yeah, it's it sometimes it runs a little like free jazzy, but it's um, a little bit fusiony. But yeah, definitely a, more of a slick thing going on there. Um, picked this up in Japan, Gatefold. This is the French pressing, I believe. Um, Sonny Murray's homage to Africa. Um, yeah, very avant-garde. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of uh, interesting players on here. I'm just gonna open this. Sorry, guys. I hate the sound of these things. It's Blake's sleeve, but um, yeah. So it's a gatefold, but it's, it's a single disc. It's all in French, but you got um, yeah. So uh, Gretchen Moncure the third, Lester Bowie, um, Archie Shep. Uh, Clifford Thornton, Albert Silver, Roscoe Mitchell, yeah, Kenneth uh, Terrell, and Jim Lee. So there's a lot of the, um, what do you call it, um, art ensemble on there. But a um, pretty, pretty damn good album. I get it, like, you know, four and a half. Um, kind of avant garde, minimalist, um, kind of, yeah, it, you know, three does, but more of the avant garde side of things. Um, Harry Hart. I'm not sure where how, how we it. Um, it's in that in that vein, but um, great album. I uh, pick up in Japan, pretty, pretty clean copy. Uh, I had this for a while, but not a clean copy. Uh, this is like a thrift find, but I'm a big fan of the movie, so I picked that up. And you know, it's, it's a decent soundtrack. It's, I give it a four, but um, discovered uh, I really do like Handle. So I'm definitely gonna be picking up some of that um, in the future. I highly recommend the movie if you've never seen it. Uh, picked this up. I uh, found this um, found this list cheaply on um, some forum or another. Uh, so this is this um, double disc version of Funhouse. Um, yeah, it was actually a really good sounding pressing. So like, nice mix, uh, pretty clean vinyl, but uh, yeah, so it's, I actually, I didn't listen to the first disc because I've listened to it so many times, but um, I, I threw on the second disc, which is all um, outtakes, so it's got um, the alternative take of TVI, uh, Loose, Down on the Street, Dirt, um, Got Lost in the Future, which I don't, I think that only really appears on um, like these alternative take albums or whatever. Um, alternate take of 1970, another one of Funhouse. So basically, it's everything but LA Blues. And it was just um, swapping out that uh, Lost in the Future track. So, um, yeah, great sounding. Love it. Um, didn't have, yeah, this is like Funhouse was the one studio I was missing. So, just jumped on that because it was cheap. Yeah, because um, the double disc version goes for some money sometimes. Well, don't know why. I don't know. Anyway, it's a great, uh, great release.
probably don't need the second disc unless you're like uh, early in disc just but yep uh this is one of the japanese finds i did i realized after i bought it i had this mixed up with um uh what's it what's that role in this howard um project uh that's what i had it mixed with in my mind but it was about the same date um so this is this mortal coral but the other one's um this uh it's a very similar name i don't i had it earlier i looked it up it almost almost very very similar name um but anyway uh i was expecting something a little different but i actually really like this um so it's a double disc on 4ad um so what these guys were it's like a like 4ad super group of sorts um so it's got like part of the um Cocto twins and a lot of the other you know early to mid 80s uh for, you know the really early avant-garde um 480 guys so it actually worked out man yeah <laughs> i actually really enjoyed this one um is it appropriate i would know but four and a half ish um, i actually i did actually really enjoy that um you know think you know like uh Lori anderson or ann peacock um yeah, Cocteau Twins, that, that sort of avant-garde, alternative rock, um, mid-80s. Yeah, it, it's actually a really good example of it. Um, so yeah, maybe I'd pick up some more of those later on. Um, yeah, so finally, yeah, this was a Christmas present. So I finally got, <laughs> got a new copy of this. I used to have this on CD. I, I, I might hunt down the deluxe version to put the, the bonus disc at some point. I, I don't see thing the... The extra money for the uh, bonus disc on the vinyl version at this point, unless they repress it because it goes for ridiculous money. But um, this is a uh, yeah, this is the one that they self-released on uh, was it Goo Records or whatever they call their own label. It's not a Goo. Um, but yeah, really nice clean mix. One of my favorite Sonic Youth albums. Um, it's somewhere around three or four, I'd say. But uh, the, uh, around the same, I, I do like this era. I like the really early stuff. I like this era. After this, it starts kind of going downhill for me. But uh, love, yeah. If you don't know Daydream Nation, you you need to know it. Um, another Christmas gift. Uh, I, I've been working a lot on getting a lot of the essential albums I was missing. Uh, so Nui's first album. Um, I probably don't need to go beyond this one really. Uh, there there other albums are good, but th this is the pinnacle, and that's, I'm pretty much one and done. I got this one, I got La Dusseldor. I mean, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I need. Um, this is the one where Negative Land came from, so great track, and uh, yeah. I'm, as a band, Negative Land, yeah, I don't know, they're a little hit mess for me, but um, yeah, Revisit, 68 Comeback, not their best, but it, it's, it's a pretty good, um, I think it's like, it's only like six tracks, or I think it's a 45, too. <laughs> it, goes, it goes by pretty fast. But they were part of that, um, which is like sympathy, yeah, sympathy, um, sympathy for the record industry. It was like kind of '90s uh, retro garage punk stuff. Um, pretty solid album. Uh, like a, I don't know, be a four, four and a half. Definitely a keeper though. Yeah, new definitely is a yeah, that's a four and a half all day long, um, at least. And then uh, this was a kind of a sort of blind buy. Never was not familiar with this album at all. Um, picked this up at uh, I think this was a record store find, or no, it was the record show find. Um, so I was at a record show, dug through a um, bunch of uh, kind of yeah. I was going through the jazz bins, found this. Never, never seen it before, but it has um, it's called uh, Where Fortune Smiles. So. The main artist is John McLaughlin, but it's also got Dave Holland, uh, Carl Berger, Stu Martin, and John Sermon. Um, so I was expecting it to be a little more fusion-y because of the dates on this, because, um, yeah, especially with uh, John McLaughlin. But it actually, this is much more of a free jazz album. It's, it's pretty out there. Um, really, really like this. So very, very, very happy I picked this up. Um, if you see it, I highly recommend it. Um, as far as I know, the vinyl version it was only Japan, which is why I've never seen it before. Uh, though I, I suspect there might be like a CD reissue, it might be a little easier to get a hold of. But um, yeah, that's a five all day long. It's a really good album. Yeah, one of my favorite albums. Um, this is a kind of mid to late 80s uh, repress, but Ingress and Owens, Inside My Brain. 
um, the original artwork. I, I think there's like a reissue you can still get that has the original artwork. Um, it's, uh, I forget what movie that was from. It was, it was from like a, yeah, from an old uh, like 64 movie. It had like a girl with the axe. <laughs> it has a girl with the axe in her head um, from a movie. But um, yeah, so pretty seminal um, late 70s, early 80s. Um, yeah, California punk. Um, Proto hardcore, pretty fast. But, um, yeah, for me as a five, it's, it's pretty sloppy punk. Um, five, four, four and a half, maybe. It's there, there's there's some duds on there, but it's a it's a pretty short album. Gets it done. Um, this is uh, Hijo Ken's. Um, uh, I forget the title of this one, but it's, it's like I think this is considered their um, second album, maybe. But it's but it was probably recorded first because it's like all live recordings. Um, so the artwork was by a famous um, Japanese um, artist, so they named it after the title of the artwork. Um, it had nothing to do with the uh, with the uh, the music. So Hijo Ken's, uh, it's pretty harsh noise, uh, yeah, experimental stuff. Um, yeah, the I, the the um, yeah, it has a couple. We'll, we'll say posters. <laughs> I guess we're the original insert so from the album. This is like a reissue from Italy, I want to say. I uh, found it in a noise shop in Japan, especially like a noise artist. Um, so, yeah, the, the artwork is just like just photos of the performances were pretty damn wild. Um, so, yeah, they're just like smearing dead fish all over themselves. Uh, yeah, the girls like flashing the audience. <laughs> it's, um, a lot, a lot of photos of that one. Um, yeah, it's uh, no, no pants apparently, no panties. Anyway, um, it's a great. Yeah, it was worth it. Just <laughs> had a little insert. It's pretty wild. Which, uh, I'm probably not going to show you those because they're not safe for uh, YouTube. But uh, yeah, that's a pretty solid album. Four and a half all day long. Um, started getting to my seven just a little bit. So this was a reissue, uh, reissue TV party I got from a friend a while back. Um, yeah, of course, yeah, TV parts went probably, uh, Black Flag's, uh, most famous track. This is the Rollins version, um, and it's got, uh, it's d different lineups with both. This is kind of a transitional album, uh, seven-inch, uh, single. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, a, it's got a kind of weird lineup. It's got Bill Stevenson on one side and Neil on another, um, it's got Dez on vocals on one side and Penny on the other, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I think the Dez stuff is stronger, but, yeah, the TV parties are one of their better tracks for sure. Yep, and this is a one I picked up years ago. Uh, I believe I got this at Smash in D.C. Um, yeah, Punk Store, well, back when it was in Georgetown. Um, when Georgetown was still a little sketchy. Um, it's a crime phase, fan club sucks, so... Basically, it has a seven-inch of Youth Brigade from DC, and it's got a no um, no labels, which I think was also a DC band, but I could be wrong. Um, it's a color vinyl with one one green and one pink, um, a white label. Um, it's, it's a boot of other other singles, basically. So, yeah, I I'd rather like Youth Brigade. I, I need to either hunt down some of their other stuff, but uh, yeah, fun uh, DC hardcore. Maybe not a hardcore to kick, uh, as you'll see. <laughs> um, yeah, this was one I picked up in Japan. I should have got two copies. Sorry, sorry, John. I should have got yeah another one. Um, I'm holding on to this one. Uh, got one side slant six, one side um, uh, with makeup. So, at least in Japan, the, apparently you can get this fairly easy in the states, which I didn't realize at the time. But eh, it's, pretty, it's a it's a pretty solid one. If you like the band, you'll like the single. Is it? Is it the best thing they've ever put out? No, not, no for neither. But it's still a pretty, pretty damn good single. Um, it's got a really good cover of um, "Rebel Rebel" on there, and I thought there was one other really good cover on here. I don't know. We're having a baby. Remove this cover. Anyway, well, yeah, it's actually a really good um, David Bowie cover, <laughs> "Rebel Rebel" by uh, Set Six. Um, yeah. Pretty classic. Wasted again. Um, it's a comp uh, posthumous, I believe, uh, after they broke up uh, one of the first times, anyway. I think they reformed after this. Uh, so, 
collection of singles. So it's a little all over the place uh, with the various lineups. Um, just easy way to get into Black Flag. So that one's a pretty solid to comp, uh, four and a half ish. Yeah, I love this album. Um, this is uh, probably like a late 80s repress. Earth AD Misfits. It's also got Wolf's Blood on it. So it's like two, I guess it's two EPs or something. Um, yeah, so pretty, pretty solid one. It's got Robo, um, Robo on it from, who was also in Black Party at one point. Um, yeah, so, uh, so yes, I've been reading one of that uh, hardcore book that Sean gave me, so I've been listening to a lot of hardcore, but a yeah, pretty solid album, at least a four and a half, maybe a little higher. Uh, picked this one up in Japan, um, so again, uh, kind of in the psych vein, White Noise, Lux Storm, this is the U.S. cover, because it's a U.S. copy. Um, very similar to that Buddha Rock one, actually. Um, also has a very not safe for work uh, sexual thing going on, um, just like Buddha Rock. Um, but this time I think it's on the first side. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I like the original UK artwork better, I think, but uh, still kind of cool. But um, yeah, excellent album, four and a half all day long. Um, this is definitely gets a strong Don't Go There Randy. Uh, Duma, which I forget the name of this particular one. I don't think it's self-titled, but but anyway, they only have one LP. Um, kind of hard to describe exactly. Um, so a lot of, uh, it's not all really harsh beats with uh, screaming vocals, I guess is how you describe it. Uh, so it's, um, I don't know if it quite consider black metal that's coming kind of from that wheelhouse. Um, so it's, it's, it's very different. It's very, very harsh. Not for everyone, for sure. Um, oh, that's what, that's what it is. I, I never realized that. Okay. So is that the backward? Okay. So naked, naked tapes? Is that what it, uh, maybe that's the label. Okay. I, could, I didn't put that together. That was sideways. Okay. Anyway. But, um, yeah, that's, I don't know, pretty solid four, I'd, I'd give it, it's not essential, it was a fun listen, it's different. Um, finally got this back in my collection, um, I had an original, and I could, I don't know, it either got stolen by my brother, or I sold it before I moved to Japan the first time, one or the other, that with, it's got a couple albums I really regret, like Suicidal Tendencies, I had a really clean copy of their first album, that's still in the shrink, and, um, the yeah, Alice in Chains on vinyl. I don't know. Either my brother took them or I sold them, which I don't. I don't know. I don't remember selling. Anyway, Agent Orange, Living in Darkness. Uh, this version, I don't. Know, I think it came out like record day, but I think you can still kind of get it. Um, on a birthday, or Christmas present. So it has a bunch of um, bonus tracks. It's like one, two, four, five. Yeah, so it adds like five tracks to it, so I, I guess it, in a way it's better than my original. Um, but that would have been cool to still have my original. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty damn seminal, essential California punk hardcore whatever album. It's kind of transitional. Um, pretty yeah, four I get I get four and a half on that version I'd say. Yeah, this one I was a bit disappointed in, but it's, it's kind of cool. Uh, Wild Rats. Um, so what this is, is there was a movie I was really into at the time um, called, um, what was it, uh, Velvet Goldmine. It's kind of into like the glam, it was about kind of like the glam thing, Bowie and uh, Iggy Pop and all that, but it's based on them anyway. Um, so yeah, this was recorded, um, this is basic the band from the soundtrack, which was re-recording a lot of Stooges and kind of glammy stuff. So you had Ron Ashton of Stooges, uh, Thurston Moore of Sonic Youth, Don Fleming, um, Sean Lennon, um, and Mark Arm on vocals, and Mike Watts. So it's, it's kind of like a super group. So this is like, um, I guess after they recorded the soundtrack, they kept going. So they made an album. <laughs> Um, and then it finally got re re uh, released on vinyl. Uh, so you basic, um, my understanding is like there's like a whole bunch of random colors. So I got like, pur like a purple swirl, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm not touching the colored vinyl. Don't care. Uh, but um, 
he has an album. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's yeah, it does sound like Ron Ashton. He got a lot of uh, Mark Arm vocals on there, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I can't really recommend this as an album. Um, you can stream it on Bandcamp, see if you like it, but for me, it's, um, it's around a three and a half, to be honest. Um, it's, I'd probably keep it just because like, I'm a fan of like all the people involved and I'm a fan of the movie, so it, that'd be the main reason I keep it. I do need to repurchase the soundtrack because I sold that all back. Um, he yeah, has some interesting stuff going on, but it's, yeah, I don't know. It's not like a proper album. It's a little bit all over the place, but it, it has its moments, I guess. Then uh, just a handful of CDs. Uh, skip the crap first. Um, so this was um, Friction's first album, so one of the early Japanese punk bands. Um, yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's not, it's not like essential, essential. Um, I was looking for this on vinyl, couldn't find it, but yeah, it's, it's like a, maybe like a four. It's more, um, I don't know. I, I didn't pay a lot for the CD version. Like, like in Japan, I got, got it for like 10 bucks maybe. Um, it's, it's, unlike a lot of the early Japanese punk, it actually does sound like punk. A lot of the early Japanese punk is a lot more avant-garde sounding because they just didn't know what punk sounded like. Um, this one does, it sounds like pretty straight ahead punk, it's, um, it, it's interesting, but not, not essential, it's, uh, yeah, four-ish, um, but I'd probably keep it for now at least, um, and then this, uh, I, I bought the first few of these, this is a really good comp, um, UFO Club, it's one of my, uh, favorite, uh, music venues in, uh, in Tokyo, um, they do more, like, garage, they focus mostly on, like, kind of garagey stuff, but a little bit on the psych end, too. So, um, yeah, there, there's, I think, six discs. I bought the first three. Next time I'm in Japan, I might pick up the other three. But, um, yeah, it's, it's not a ton of, it's, like, it's actually fairly short. So it's only got um, nine tracks on it, so it's probably, like, 40 minutes-ish. But, uh, yeah, most, uh, yeah, it's got muddy, um, muddy, but Muddy Frankenstein on here, I guess um, they get more moder moderately uh, famous here. Uh, Watuzi Zombie, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, so these were all like, uh, I think these were like late 90s, early 2000s bands in that scene. So kind of kind of an interesting listen. Um, for me, it's just like kind of revisiting some of the old bands. So that's a pretty fun comp. Well, pretty solid four. Um, had this for a while. Like, I think my brother gave it to me. He was downsizing. Uh, Cheap Trick, Budokan. Um, I don't know. I'm not a massive fan, but, you know, you know three and a half-ish. It's, it's fun. And then, uh, yeah, again, yeah, it's kind of three and a half-ish. I, I forgot to even buy. <laughs> it's like, definitely a thrift buy. Um, I don't think I spent more than a buck on this. Uh, this they were famous for uh, I'll Be There, the theme for Friends. Uh, which is why you always see this in the thrift store, so never pay more than a buck for this one. Um, it's, it's actually a surprisingly decent album. Um, it's got that kind of uh, poppy indie rock sound. Um, that, yeah, you, 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 know, you know the Friends for soundtrack. Um, the rest of the album's a, actually probably a little better than that, but, um, but yeah, it's just this kind of thing you can throw on the background. You have people over, it, you know, it's a good background music CD kind of thing. So, um, yeah, again, pretty pretty solid three and a half there. Yeah, that's all I got for you today. Uh, I had some more, but yeah, I've shown it enough times. So, yep, that's just stuff I've been listening to. Hope everyone's good. Uh, cheers. And uh, I guess, yep, uh, I'll uh, see you next week uh, after I catch up with some stuff. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to be listening to a lot more, like, of the kind of avant-garde or background music kind of stuff this next week, because I've just got a lot of studying to do in the, the next, uh, month or two. So, it's probably going to inform my, uh, musical selections quite a bit. Anyway, um, take care, guys. Later.